Hey everyone, in today's episode, we're diving into the latest tech and gaming news from AMD's upcoming processors and Intel's memory leap to the latest game releases and Epic PC ports. All this and more coming up, so stay tuned on Edge Runners. First up, let's talk about AMD's upcoming Hawkpoint refresh processors. According to a popular Chinese insider, Golden Pig Upgrade, AMD is gearing up to release a new series of Ryzen processors based on an older architecture. Dubbed the Hawkpoint Refresh, this series is set to compete directly with Intel's Core 200 lineup. These processors will utilize Zen 4 compute cores, integrated RDNA 3 graphics, and the first generation XDNA neural processor. While this neural processor is 60% faster than what we've seen in the Phoenix series, it still falls short of the requirements for Microsoft's Copilot plus PC certification. The Hawkpoint refresh models are expected to be a rebranding of the Ryzen 8040 series, aligning AMD's naming system with a more modern format similar to Intel's recent moves. We're looking at a potential release towards the end of this year, right alongside Intel's Core 200 series. Moving on to gaming, Final Fantasy 16 has finally made its debut on PC as of September 17th. Available on Steam in the Epic Games Store, the PC version comes with a launch trailer highlighting its enhancements. The standard edition is priced at $50, while the full edition, including all DLCs, will set you back $70. After its PlayStation 5 exclusivity for over a year, the game has been well received with an average score of 88 on Open Critic based on 173 reviews. Fans can now enjoy improved graphics and performance on PC. Tom's Hardware has reported an intriguing issue with AMD Ryzen 9000 series processors when using AVX 512 instructions. These instructions are designed to boost performance in specific workloads, but on AMD CPUs, they might have the opposite effect, causing lower clock speeds and increased power consumption. For instance, the Ryzen 9950X experiences a drop from 5700 MHz to 5300 MHz under heavy AVX 512 loads. While Intel's processors also see drops, AMD's approach is somewhat less efficient. This could be due to the older technology nodes used in Intel's AVX 512 support. Interestingly, AMD's Zen 5 architecture seems to handle AVX 512 better, addressing these performance challenges more effectively than its Intel counterparts. On September 19th, the PC version of the action-adventure game God of War Ragnarok was released. The game is available in digital stores such as Steam and the Epic Games Store. The release was accompanied by a short trailer featuring quotes from glowing reviews by leading gaming outlets. The PC port includes a number of improvements compared to the original PlayStation version. Some of the key upgrades include an uncapped frame rate, enhanced lighting, higher quality shadows, increased geometric detail, as well as support for ultra-wide monitors and technologies like NVIDIA DLC. SS 3.7, AMD FSR 3.1, and Intel XESS 1.2. Additionally, the developers added an option to reduce the frequency of hints from companions during puzzle-solving sequences. The original God of War Ragnarok was released in November 2022 for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. The game was very well received by both gamers and the gaming press, with an average score of 93 out of 100 on OpenCritic, based on 194 reviews. In hardware news, Intel's upcoming Arrow Lake processors are expected to support QDIM DDR5 10,000 memory, a significant leap from the Raptor Lake series. This new standard promises higher performance, with QDIM modules featuring an integrated clock generator for stable operation at high frequencies. The ASRock Z890 Tai Chi motherboard is already claiming support for DDR5 9200 memory, and BWIN has introduced its DW100 RGB modules with frequencies up to 9200 MHz. This advancement in memory technology could greatly enhance performance for high-end gaming setups. The PS5 Pro is set to include a new feature called Game Boost, designed to automatically enhance performance in over 8,500 games, including both PS4 and PS5 titles. Digital Foundry recently explored Game Boost's potential using Elden Ring as a test case. They compared performance on a base PS5 and a PC with a Radeon RX 6800 GPU, believed to be comparable to the PS5 Pro's hardware. The standard PS5 runs Elden Ring at around 40 frames per second, while the RX 6800 achieves around 60 frames per second with occasional drops. Digital Foundry emphasized that their findings are speculative since they don't have access to the PS5 Pro hardware yet. They also noted that Sony's proprietary PSSR upscaling technology's efficiency remains unknown. If Game Boost performs as anticipated, it could significantly improve frame rates in games that currently struggle to exceed 30 frames per second on the standard PS5, such as Red Dead Redemption 2. 
WCCF Tech reports that Nvidia plans to completely cease production of its flagship GeForce RTX 4090 graphics card in October of this year. This includes both the standard GeForce RTX 4090 and the cut-down GeForce RTX 4090D, which was sold exclusively in China as a way to circumvent US government sanctions. The main reason for halting production is Nvidia's intention to prepare the market for the release of its next-generation Blackwell GPUs. Additionally, the company wants to help its partners sell off existing stock of RTX 40 series cards more quickly so vendors can focus on promoting the new generation of GPUs. However, informants from Board Channel also suggest that Nvidia's actions could result in a temporary shortage and price increases for high-end graphics cards. The developers of Assassin's Creed Shadows have introduced a new tool called Atmos, which has been added to the Anvil engine to simulate realistic weather conditions in the game. Atmos allows for the creation of dynamic wind, moving clouds, realistic thunder, fog, and precipitation. Additionally, depending on the weather, dew forms and water accumulates on leaves. Weather not only enhances the visuals, but also impacts gameplay. For example, in foggy conditions, it's easier to hide from enemies, but it also makes it harder to see them. The Atmos tool is incredibly user-friendly and can generate weather conditions instantly. Ubisoft has already stated that this new technology is groundbreaking. Though its full potential won't be fully realized in Assassin's Creed Shadows, it will be showcased in future AAA titles. The release of Shadows is scheduled for November 15, 2024, for PC and current generation Sony and Microsoft consoles. The Chinese company Biwin has announced the release of its first CUDIM standard memory modules. These are DW100 RGB modules with increased maximum bandwidth designed to work with Intel's upcoming Arrow Lake processors. The new modules support DDR5-9200 with primary timings of CL42, offering impressive performance that ensures high memory bandwidth. According to Biwin, their OC lab specialists have conducted various optimizations, making the new modules well suited for gaming setups. The memory modules are built on CUDIM technology, which allows for dynamic and independent clock frequency adjustments separate from the processor to achieve maximum speed. The DW100 RGB kit will be available with two 24GB sticks and feature massive cooling heat sinks. The release is expected in the fourth quarter of this year, though pricing has yet to be announced. Similar kits were previously unveiled by companies V-Color and Asgard. Finally, EA has released the first concept art for the new Battlefield game, which will be set in a modern-day city, possibly in Europe. Vince Zampella, who leads the franchise, shared that the game will aim to capture the essence of classic Battlefield titles like Battlefield 3 and 4. The new Battlefield will drop the specialist system from Battlefield 2042 and reintroduce the traditional class system. Maps will be more compact and dense, and the game will feature 64-player matches rather than the previous 128-player mode. Zampella acknowledged Battlefield 2042's mix reception and emphasized EA's goal to deliver a strong launch experience. Full development started in early 2024, with weekly testing currently in progress, suggesting a potential release in 2025. EA's CEO, Andrew Wilson, has called the game one of the most ambitious projects in the company's history. Moving on to storage, Samsung has just kicked off mass production of their new PM9E1 SSD. These SSDs are making waves as some of the highest performing M.2 PCI 5.0 drives on the market. Built on Samsung's 8th generation VNAN flash memory and using a 5 nanometers controller, the PM9E1 SSDs boast impressive sequential read speeds of up to 14.5 gigabytes per second and write speeds reaching 13 gigabytes per second. Plus, Samsung is claiming a 50% improvement in energy efficiency efficiency over their previous models. These drives also come with new security features, including Security Protocol and Data Model V1.2. Four models will be available, ranging from 512GB to a whopping 4TB. While we don't have pricing or exact release dates yet, these SSDs are definitely worth keeping an eye on for those looking to upgrade their storage. Lastly, Chinese analyst Daniel Camilo claims that Black Myth Wukong, the debut project from Game Science, has already sold 20 million copies. On Twitter, Camilo also shared information about the release dates for the game's first DLC. According to the Insider, the developers plan to release the DLC either at the end of January or the beginning of February 2025, aiming to coincide with the Chinese New Year celebrations. However, Camilo believes the DLC might not replicate the success of the main game. The expansion could be purchased by up to 20% of players 
who bought the original Black Myth Wukong. Earlier rumors suggested that Game Science is working on at least two DLCs and will then start developing a sequel. Additionally, the studio is continuing work on ports for Xbox Series S and X. Thanks for watching our latest gaming and tech roundup. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on our latest updates. Drop a comment below on which story excited you the most. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.